In this brief video, I'm going to be combining all four of my 190 slash 180 watt panels in series to go into the AC200P that I've newly acquired. What up, I'm I from Ask God Solar, where I like to keep solar simple. Power station solar panel works out for me. <laughs> Things may get more complicated in the future. Anyway, I'm excited to have this AC200P on deck. I have my reservations about the device in terms of like its capabilities and you know different settings and all of that jazz. But at the end of the day, it's a dope device. It's just overshadowed by the AC200 Max, but it's good enough for me because now I have panels I can put in series so I don't have that limitation. Back when I was considering it, I couldn't put panels in series or I would have to put a 200 watt is the whole thing. But now I can put four panels in series Let's get to it. Quick caveat about um, series. I'm, I haven't been the biggest fan of series. I won't get deeply into details about why, but ultimately series treats the, all the panels as one panel. So if you get shade on one, the whole array is impacted and you might as well not have much solar going on anyway. But I'm in a position where because I have all these other solar panels going on and providing power, I'm kind of okay with it because the power station has the capacity, the capability to take those in. So now I can put all of those in series and just have it profit. So instead of getting, basically I want to consolidate cables to not have as many cables coming into my garage. So now I'll have one less set. That's the goal. And also what this does is it allows me on an overcast day to get all of this power into a singular power station. So you typically get about 10% output on these panels. So, you know, 10%, 19, 19, 19, 18. You get a little more on brighter days. So all of that will go into one power station, which is a good look. Now, I have never put this many panels in series. This is gonna be a bit of a challenge. I believe, or maybe not. I just have to get in here and get these extensions off of here, which are pretty easily accessible. It's just, will they come out easily? <laughs> and here's the challenge right here, right? Put that dip on my jacket, get my jacket dirty. Oh, boom. Now I am gonna keep the original 10 gauge cable. In my last video, I was talking about 12 gauge versus 10 gauge. Um, but because of the distance, I am going to do 10 gauge. I don't think it matters as we saw in the last video, but I'm going to do it anyway. <laughs> and then we'll put my 12 gauge cable back on the panels that it came from. Just FYI, it's the end of my Sunday. So I'm not really losing out on much by disconnecting these now. I hate disconnecting and messing with panels when they could be producing power, but I'm about to get right on the edge of my shady part for this part of my yard. All right, so now I just need to connect all these babies together. <laughs> so we got mail open. Wait, that don't seem right. I got a female here and I got a female here. What am I missing? Oh, okay, cool. All right, yeah, the cables are just kind of outside the dirt. So this female that's right here is on the it's pointing out the wrong side so i need to connect boom bat now i have male here and female there now one of the challenges in that is going to be how long my cable actually is <laughs> so i only have one cable coming over here and i need to be able to get that extension cable let me show you that extension cable has to connect to that and all the way down at this other end to that. So what I'll probably end up doing is tucking this under and bringing it like as far as it could go right here and then tucking that under and bringing it as far as it could go right here. Yeah, this should be fine. Cause look at where this cable is. I got this cable all the way down here because it was originally on this array. So having these kind of meet in the middle, ultimately should be fine for this one. So let's get to it. Now these cables turned out to be not as long as I thought it's realistically like right here. Let me just show you. And this one only realistically came like right under there. So that's not perfect, but we'll make it work. Ah. So that one at least reaches that. I ain't gonna have no problem with this one reaching this one. Oh, let this dirty panel get on my shoulder. 
<laughs> Boom dizzle, hot kizzle. All these panels right now are in one series string. <laughs> Let's see if we could check voltage because I'm pretty sure my parallel cables are still on the dip that leaves the, the joint open so I can measure. The AC200P is not down here yet. I need to go grab it, but let's check the voltage anyway. Let's see here. We got bam. Bam. 92 volts. Very interesting. <laughs> oh, that's a lot, but it's rated up to 145. I've never had this much solar power coming in in voltage. So yeah, we good money. I'm gonna try and hook this up pretty fast so I can see how many volts it produces with a load on it. Oh, the behemoth. <laughs> so this tip has an aviator plug on it. Never used it before. I know I gotta line something up. Clamped in, then MC4 cable to XT90. Oh, it's uh, interesting. It's not bundled together in any capacity. It's kind of loose out here in these streets. Come on. Ooh. Actually, I'm going to disconnect this. I'm going to plug this in first. I don't know if you have to do that, but it is 96 volts. 92 volts or whatever it is. The dip just turned on. It's getting 16 watts. I was informed that solar turns the device on. AC does not. I have experienced that personally. Now let's look at some voltages. I believe it was 92 before. We'll see what kind of voltage we're dealing with with a load on it. Seems to be dancing around. It's dancing around 80, 82, 81, 77. I don't know why. To be able to record this and hold these in place is a little bit challenging. So maybe that's why it's bouncing around. Now it's still doing 70. 80, 76, 77, it's bouncing all over the place. Implications, with this being down here having four panels on it, whereas the four panels would typically split between these two, Ace Volt, I could tell, one of these babies is going upstairs and the EB70 is gonna come down and be in the garage right where this is. That's the EB3A and that's on that panel right there. That all powers 200 watt dip, which is a portable deploy because I can't always have this cable running in here during the winter because we drive in and out of here once it gets really cold. Other implications. Right now, this EB3A, I always call this the EB something. It's the EB120, 1200 watt hours of capacity, 500 uh, watts of solar capable, up to 65 volts. That has the three Renergy panels on it. I have two regular Renergies and one Renergy Eclipse. This thing is what's going to be interesting because it's going to have to change. This is my battery charging station, which has the PowerWorks MPPT charge controller. Super simple. I'm a fan of simple. It's um, charging this battery and these batteries. It's on a 320 watt Renergy panel, but this is 1200 watts just like this what I'm gonna do is I'll probably take the Acatel which no longer has solar down here this one's going upstairs I'm gonna move this one so this will be charging up with the 320 watt Renergy dip so the batteries are just gonna work as overflow using these chargers I have two of these so if the AC200P gets full too fast which is as liable to do especially in the summer months then I'll just power dump into batteries, which give me an extra kilowatt. I mean, I have three batteries, so I have an extra three kilowatts. So what will probably end up happening is I'll have the power dump from this one. I have two chargers, so I'm gonna make it work. And I also get to power this deep freezer and this fridge. EB150, I mean, EB120 is gonna stay down here as well because it's the only dip outside of this one that has a higher than 50 volt um, rating. If this MPPT PowerWorks charge controller could take more than 50 volts, I would probably keep those three panels hooked into the batteries to charge the batteries down here. But maybe not because it's always better to have power come into a power station instead of batteries. Batteries are for power dumping in my situation. I like the fact that I got the charge controller so I can put bad energy into this because I have extra panels laying around. But that's going to be interesting. I may have to take my little PowerWorks dip 
and then just put it on a extra panel. You know what I mean? I got all these panels laying around, flexible panels and folding panels, that that may work out perfectly here or anywhere for that matter. <laughs> now, if you're interested in behind the scenes videos or my more casual videos that don't quite fit on YouTube, check me out on Patreon. The lowest tier is like $5 and I also have a temporary tier that's $3. That's only if you want to support the channel and if you have the coins. Ain't no need going out of your way to give coins to me if you're struggling. But if you're into it, check it out. Ooh.